วัสดีครับทุกท่านมีความต้อนรับกับเข้าสู่ช่องเบลพัดครับวันนี้เป็นเกียรติมากนะครับที่ได้นั่งคุยกับคุณไมค์นะครับซึ่งเป็น CEO เจ้าของโฟลเดอร์และทุกสิ่งอย่างของเรดราบิกเดี๋ยวมาอินเทอร์วิวกันนะครับโอเคสำหรับ that's a couple of questions but I just want to ask the first thing first and you just introduce yourself a little bit and what did you do before you uh, opened a brand? Uh, I'm Mike from Red Rabbit Trading Company. Before this, we have a tattoo shop. We did body piercing. We focus on body piercing. It's been open for 24 years and it's still still open. Did that when I retired out of that. I took a year off and I taught myself how to make knives and soap. And then jewelry, and just kind of tried a bunch of stuff, and the jewelry just stuck. Just kept going forward with the jewelry. It's not just a jewelry, though. It's just an iconic piece by piece. Where, where does it come from? Like, where was your love about this? Uh, well, when I first kind of saw like southwestern jewelry, most of the time you kind of saw like kind of the hippie stuff, the '60s and '70s stuff, like very flowery and stuff like that. So I never really liked it until I kind of discovered like the earlier stuff, the pre-30s, you know, stuff that was kind of made from 1860 to 1890s. It was like very masculine, very heavy. I saw images of that and was just like, how can I get a hold of that? Once I started seeing like vintage pieces that were for sale, they were way too out of my budget. So we'd like pick up little pieces from time to time that were vintage and fix them. And then in fixing them kind of was like, well, I'm gonna try and start to make them and then started making our own pieces from there. Mostly trying to emulate those vintage pieces that we couldn't afford. So that's why you want to make jewelry because you want something that you cannot afford. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of friends that make things or have brands that that's how they started. They couldn't afford what was in the shop. Just figure out how to do it yourself. But the thing is, I, I read some of the article that you are going to find the master of the master of making this and learn from him. Uh, I mean, I got really lucky. One guy on uh, Instagram that did the super traditional style, I pretty much just bothered him on Instagram. Till... So he's on Instagram also. Yeah. yeah, well, he's a younger guy, but he's the best of the best. His name is Jesse Robbins. I bothered him about buying a bracelet because I wanted like a way in the door. And I kept bothering him about this bracelet and bothering him. And eventually he just said, I'm super sorry. I don't have time to make it. And I just told him, Hey, like I don't really care about the bracelet, but like how can I get in? Can I come clean your shop? Can I clean your car? What can I do? And he said, if you're serious, he goes, this, here's a list of things you need and then be at this place at this time. I showed up and I worked with him for two days straight and I got to meet his mentor. It was funny, a couple years down the road, his mentor, which was named Bubba, said, you know what? Out of like 35 or 40 years of making jewelry, so many people say they want to come and learn, they want to do this and all this stuff and he goes there's only two people that have ever showed up and you're both sitting right here well out of the many people that have asked him to learn how to make jewelry it was just me and Jesse that had actually showed up it can translate that this kind of jewelry is just will run out after like a yeah years. I mean this the super traditional style that kind of started in like the late 1860s there's not very many people making it especially very many Americans. There's a couple Japanese people that are, but as far as like that style, full on scratch, how they did it, you know, 150 years ago, there's maybe like five or eight people that are like consistently making it in the States. Five people, including you, you too. Yeah, I mean, it kind of fluctuates because there's people that will like, that know how to do it, but don't okay. do it consistently, or will like take a class and then kind of do it for a little bit and stuff like that, but like actually like stick with it and do it regularly, there's probably less than 10 people. How many years have you been open the Rare Rabbit Trading? We've been doing it probably seriously about eight years, give or take a little bit depending on, you know, when you really started and when you started taking it seriously kind of thing. Congrats for 10 years in advance. I believe you're gonna go for like 40 years. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Why Red Rapid though? I really don't like brands that have like a name, you know, yes. somebody's name on it. Gonna the be door. like Mike and Mackenzie. Yeah, or well, like I think that 
You know, I think a brand is always bigger than the person or the team. And I think a brand is something that everybody can get behind. Also, it's something that's easier to translate into other languages and stuff, whatever. When we started at the time, I had a, a little pet rabbit. And he was like that dark, kind of caramel, velveteen color. Velvet? And so it was like what? kind of red. red For, so you named the brand after your animal, mm -hmm. your, your lovely pet, one. Yeah. yeah. What did he pass away though? Uh, he passed away like right when we started, kind of like eight years oh, ago. Oh, so. sorry about that. Oh, it, but you are the only one that made the juries all of this um, by you. My wife does the beating and stuff like that, and then we have one friend that helps us from time to time. But yeah, for the most part, I'd say 98, 97%. I make every single piece, or at least every piece will go through our hands and stuff. Let's say about the river right now. Might not exactly know how the silver thing is come from or the turquoise come from. Can you explain a little bit about the why it's so special in your like eyes or? Uh, I mean, I think it's something very much like a raw denim. It very much like encapsulates a, a time period, especially in the U.S. The stuff that we make kind of focuses on like the 1920s to 1955, which back home is very much like a Route 66 era. It's a pretty famous road that kind of opened up the Southwest. Uh, and a lot of the imagery is just very iconic with the Thunderbirds and the arrows and the turquoise and stuff like that. So a lot of it just kind of harkens back to like pretty specific aesthetic to a certain point in time, especially as far as like Americana goes. Like very much like the 501 or right. a biker jacket. Like when All you right. see that piece, you kind of think of a certain movie or a certain time frame. It's kind of similar with some of this stuff. But you don't put yourself as the original way of making, right? No, no, not at all. I mean, the stuff that was made, you know, we're just kind of trying to continue it on. I mean, even with the Jesse that taught me and, okay. and the people that taught him, we're just trying to like carry it on. It's kind of like an homage or, you know, know something like that you know but even back then or now every silversmith kind of has like their own little flair and their own little style and they'll do certain little things so from across a room like two pieces from you know a piece from a hundred years ago and a piece from now will look the same but when you get up on it you'll be able to tell how? How? Well, I mean, if you know what you're looking for, you'll just be able to tell. It's just, there, there's pretty specific, just like stamp patterns and stuff too, because back then, you know, people were making their own stamp. If you came and you wanted to place an order and you wanted a specific bird or arrow or anything like that. So you have to make... I would have to make the stamp and then make the piece of jewelry. So there's some of that also. Like some of my mentors, like I can tell their stamp super fast because that person's been using that stamp for 30 years. So if you know what you're looking for, you're gonna recognize certain types of people's work. So if someone like uh, really into this kind of jewelry, saw your, your jewelry, they would know that it's your style? I mean, I would hope so. I would hope that they're either gonna know it's ours or that they're gonna think it's vintage. Ah. I mean, the, the idea is that even with you know, double RL or Buco or anything like that is that you want them to think that it's the original piece. So, you know, what would be the most flattering is that if somebody thought it was a hundred years old. When you design though, I was talking to another couple of design like Eden, mm -hmm. he said like there's a certain type of songs that he was listening to create a collection. Do you have anything to inspire? Not really. I was talking to actually the painter Mark Maggiore about this. There's some days where you listen to classic and there's some days where you listen to metal, some days where you listen to nothing. For me, it's just, especially with an artist, like certain groups will come out at certain times in their life, or they painted this when they were here, or vice versa. And I'll see like, sometimes if I sit down to do like a batch of things, they'll come out like kind of of X style, or in the style of whatever. Or sometimes it'll be more green stones or more blue. But I don't sit down like, okay, this is what's gonna get me pumped up, or like, oh, this really? is what's gonna get me in the zone, you know, it's kind of whatever is that day and every day is kind of different this might come out this might not come out it's just kind of like you never really know for the most part but you're not gonna be like a Michelangelo that you talk to the stone <laughs> before no, he was no. cropped okay no it's mostly I, I always say that like I kind of have like a recipe like I'll have like an old book or something or like a screenshot and I'll be like okay I want to make something in this guy's style or I want to take these and these and smush them together or we got some new stones or something like that and a lot of it is kind of just Makes it. Let's see what happens. Because I think sometimes if you try an, an idea, whether it's clothing or painting or music or anything, if you try and compress it and you try and make it be something that it maybe doesn't want to be, it's just not going to be the best. That's so. their art. 
So all the silver is like the old silver. Well, some of it, we kind of do both. We do new style where you would buy it in the sheet, but then also we will pour our own bars too, where oh. that's the traditional style. It's a stone called tufa. It's very kind of like chalky, okay. but you can get it in big blocks. And you cut it in slabs, generally about like this, and then you'll cut a channel in it the size that you would want your bracelet. And then, yeah, then you liquefy your metal. And then pour it inside. And then pour it inside, yeah. Well, it's just one time or you can rebuild it? You can do multiples depending on how complex and how big your bars are and stuff like that. I always say it's kind of the difference between buying your canvas and then making your canvas. Certain projects are better for certain things and then sometimes you just want to do it the whole pain in the ass. It's way longer. So how about the, the whole pain in the ass? How many hours does it take you from the scratch to the I I mean, it's, it's one of those things where the more you do it, the faster you get, the better your setup is, the faster you get and stuff like that. The first bracelet that I made with Jesse, he said this bracelet's going to take you two days. We're each going to make a bracelet and it's going to be the exact same bracelet, but they're going to come out completely different. So it really kind of depends because sometimes you'll just get lost in a piece and it'll take two days. But sometimes you'll just, it'll be like jazz, bang, 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 and everything will go smooth and you'll be able to knock something out really quick and really cool. So it really just kind of depends. Even with foreign bars, like the traditional style, even the weather will mess mm. with how your pour goes. That depends on everything though, Ben. There's a lot of symbol in the traditional one. Mm -hmm. Why you pick like a Thunderbird and Arrows a lot? I mean, the Thunderbird and Arrows kind of came a lot more prevalent in the 20s okay. and 30s, especially when I kind of said when uh, Easterners in the U.S. started traveling through the Southwest more. It was an area of the U.S. that wasn't very open, so it kind of opened up, and with the tourists, you got people that wanted to buy shit. Okay. <laughs> and rich tourists wanted to buy stuff that looked Southwestern, so okay. they wanted arrows, they wanted birds, they wanted bears and sunsets and stuff like that. So that's where you really see like that imagery kind of get forced into a lot of the jewelry. Forced by demand. Yeah, exactly. It's just like anything, like when you see a certain color, right. you know, become more popular, it's because people want it. The stuff that's just a little bit more archaic and just kind of just has symbols and stuff like that without being anything that's super recognizable is kind of like harkens to more of like the earlier time, pre-tourist. <laughs> <laughs> what is like your favorite one though? Like if you look at your collections, what is like the, your favorite one that you did make? The one that sticks out is a bracelet that I made for myself. And then we had an appointment with Lenny Kravitz came over to our house and I didn't know that we happened to be the same size. So sometimes we'll just put bracelets out just for like display. And then my two favorite personal pieces were the ones that he took. Oh, okay. So it's like the still the like the one bracelet I still think about and it's been oh. years. That's kind of one. And But anymore, like there's a couple pieces that I've like just set aside that I've just kept for myself. Like uh, I just got a bracelet back from a customer that I, he bought it probably about a year and a half or two years ago okay. and I told him if he ever goes to get rid of it I want it. You, you want to buy it back? Yeah I want it back and I just got it back the other day like a couple weeks ago and I just put it in my house. Sometimes you'll make things and then you'll put them out just for display and then somebody wants to buy it and you're like and I can't say no yeah, though. And one of my, when I first started one of my mentors like we messed up a piece and he goes you can make it again you've made it before. So every time somebody wants something I'm like sell that but I can make it again so, it's not the same though yeah I know it's this it's this like <laughs> dance back but if somebody really wants it and they appreciate it and you gotta pay your bills so that's the way it is but that's the way it is when Lenny Kravitz wants your bracelet I would give it to him <laughs> for, for Bangkok though this kind of style is like getting a little bit more recognizable. What is like your advice to get into this kind of style? I mean, I think just try it, anything. With with this or, or clothing or music or glasses or anything, just try it, you know? Like, don't go crazy and, and get something big and wild or anything like that. But if you like it, you wanna give it a try, give it a try. We were telling a story the other day, we, we did this this event and this kid followed us and came, came to the booth and, and bought a ring and he was so happy. He was like, beaming he was so happy he bought this ring and it, it didn't really look like his style you know um, so fast forward a couple hours he comes walking down the aisle and he looks just like really sad and beat up and we're like what's up and he's like so I sent a photo of it to my girlfriend she said it's not my style oh and I was like so and he was like so can I return it and I was like yeah fine you can return it 
But that's the thing, he wanted to try it, and he was super happy and excited. Somebody else told him it's not his style, and now he's never gonna buy a jewelry, probably. But I think that's the thing, it's just, just try it. And if you like it, who cares? As far as jewelry, or, or I mean, even clothing, scale is really important. If you're gonna wear it with a suit, or if you're gonna wear it with a watch, or something like that, I think scale is more important than anything. If you like the design, that's great, but how's the scale work? I mean, I think you see that a lot in sneakers. Like, there's right. a lot of sneakers I love. They okay. look awesome. Okay. And then you see, and they're huge, like, and it just doesn't work, you know, for some people. So I think scale's really important, and just making sure that you like it. fit it. you? Yeah, and it fits you or what you want to try. What are your favorite city, though? My favorite city? I mean, Tokyo is always... I stick with my heart, though. <laughs> Tokyo is like the best. The last thing though, um, can you invite everyone to like join the trunk show? That's gonna happen tomorrow and Sunday, right? Tomorrow and Sunday, yeah. I mean, anybody that wants to come by and check stuff out, I don't want people to feel like they've gotta come by and purchase anything. We'd be stoked if just people came by and just checked stuff out and tried it on. And uh, we always tell people, whether it's here or at home, you know, try stuff on, take a photo and think on it. Like the last time, you always say to every customer that, you just put it on, take the photo yeah think yeah, about yeah, it yeah yeah like we're not the tech kind of brand that's gonna like pressure sale people I'd rather you not buy and come back in two years and be like hey I can't stop thinking of this or I want to get a gift for somebody I'd rather that than somebody feel like they got pressured into buying something right. and then you know get home and be like Ah, I'm not gonna wear this, I don't think. I just like my and buddies. Return to the another day to refund. Yeah, the or we'll all right, we'll be gone. We always say just try stuff on, you know, have fun, hang out, get different people's opinions. We'd rather people just come by and take photos and hang out. But you know the drill though, you should ask him about that because the one that he was wearing is the one that he loves so much. Well, okay, I can, I can make another one. Oh, <laughs> but not the same though. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you oh, so much sure. for your time. Thank you. Thank you. ขอบคุณมากครับแล้วก็พบกันใหม่คลิปหน้าครับใครเห็นว่าน่าสนใจครับอยากให้มาทางโชว์ในครั้งนี้ครับถ้ามาไม่ทันก็ไม่แน่อาจจะมาอีกทีตอนตุลาคมปีหน้านะครับเดี๋ยวไว้เจอกันครั้งหน้าครับผมแค่นี้ก่อนพบกันใหม่คลิปหน้าสำหรับวันนี้สวัสดีครับ Thank you. Is there anything you want to add on? I don't think so. Anything you want? You want in the frame? This is a little cow okay. that one of my mentors had a stamp similar oh, to that. Oh, so cute right yeah. there. But it's like from the top, it just looks like it's just a cool bracelet, right? Yeah. But then it's like the details on it, you know. So, and it's just, that's the thing with some of this stuff. It's kind of like a two for one. It's like you have the bracelet itself, but then there's just like, there's more details underneath. And it's kind of like, you don't really know or like you know, but most people don't know because most people are gonna see the top. But on the back. But on the back, you get to see that. Right. So as a thunderbird. That's kind of like what we were saying about different makers and stuff like that, and different styles. You know, sometimes you'll see that somebody cared a little bit more and took a little bit more time with that piece, as opposed to just kind of like wham bam and about. Like different styles. Like this. This is kind of mimicked after a guy that worked in um, Southern Colorado in this area called Garden of the Gods. Super, super, super specific style that then he kind of made prominent in that area. So then people in that area started making jewelry that looked like his style. Wow. So it's like you can kind of tra trace it all the way back, but now even, you know, a hundred and some years afterwards, there's people that are still making his style. It's like mimicking, but continuing, like it's this weird mission mash of like homage or rip off kind of thing so that's kind of what's interesting about some of it so we're just gonna have dogs we're probably not gonna have babies so this will be the babies that live on so my wife just went to ACL and I didn't know any of the bands except for blink 182 any new stuff like I don't know I just don't so you're I like alternative just, brands. old guy okay yeah you're no, not I, that old I, come on I guess when it comes to like music and pop culture though Thank you.